Hello, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Amanda Ziede with Washington Exec, and with me today to discuss driving AI adoption in the enterprise is Cedric Sims, MITRE Senior Vice President for Enterprise Innovation and Integration. Thank you for being here today, Cedric. Hello, Amanda. Thank you for the invitation. Of course. So, Cedric, as SVP for Enterprise and Integration, what are your core focus areas this year? Well, we have a number of things here at MITRE. Um, our whole network of partners that we're working with is continuing to expand. A lot of the missions that we're supporting through our FFRDCs that we operate are really requiring uh, a much more uh, complex set of organizations to come together to work to solve some, of the solve some of the most difficult problems that are facing our nation. So it gives us an opportunity to reach across our stakeholders and new partners to, uh, to bring the best uh, against solving those problems. So a lot of our focus this year is building those new stakeholder networks, uh, both with the private sector, uh, with other FFRDCs, uh, with state and local governments, and even working across our US federal government more effectively. Right. Wonderful. So how are you working to drive the adoption of AI technologies throughout MITRE? Any uh, uh, anecdotes or examples that you'd like to share? Sure. Um, you know, early in my tenure at MITRE, uh, one of the wonderful things that happened is I came to understand the special uh, partnership that we had uh, with Microsoft. Uh, went, of course, beyond just the traditional, uh, you know, consumer uh, utilization of their services and so forth. Uh, we actually had a development environment uh, where we had a co-tenancy that allowed us to do some early exploration with the chat GPT environment. It allowed us to have a private environment where we could uh, put some of our documents that we would uh, like to be um, separated and air gapped from uh, other kind of uh, uh, GPT activities and it allowed us to do some early experimentation. So, so for me, it's, a, it's very much about the people uh, and getting it in the hands of the people uh, sharing sooner is a huge push of mine. And so uh, even when we were first beta testing the capabilities, uh, we were getting it in the hands of our workforce to, uh, to, to have a try at it and, and see how it could really begin to uh, alter our ways that we worked and supported our, our sponsors. Right. Wonderful. That's very cool. You don't hear many organizations getting into ChatGPT, so... Yeah, we had uh, yeah we had this great, and we actually have uh, full uh, access into the environment. Uh, and again, for a private tenancy, it allows us to do some very special work that we do uniquely here at MITRE. Um, having a workforce of about ten thousand people, um, it's really a, a unique opportunity for us to to give it a try. Mm -hmm. As it happens, uh, our work that we have in what we call MChat, our G our GPT environment has been the fastest adopted piece of technology in our entire enterprise. Wow. Uh, we now have a nearly two thirds of our workforce that is actively using GPT in some way, shape or form. Some of it for research, uh, some of it for analysis, uh, some of it even for uh, coding and some other special, special applications. So very excited about what it has meant for our workforce. Hey, wonderful, yeah, that's very cool. Uh, so, Cedric, I understand that you're also overseeing enterprise communications, which might fall into what we were just talking about, but how do AI, cap AI capabilities play a role here? Well, it's, thank you. It's a really interesting time for us, right? Um, I remember uh, in my early exposure to AI, it was really much more about uh, machine learning and, and data science related things, things we could understand computationally. And now suddenly we've got this capacity to uh, do some things that might be creative in nature. Um, it's not lost on me. I am an engineer by, uh, by education and background. Certainly I've had other sorts of opportunities in my career to do other things, but, but I do know that uh, sometimes, uh, even in our engineering workforce, uh, the written word is not always our strong suit. We have our superpowers in other places that, that are more critical. And so, um, so one of the things that we see our MChat environment uh, being able to do is to help our engineers uh, be able to more effectively communicate and, and create the literary explanation of the wonderful and sometimes very complex work that we do. And we found that that to be a very, very effective uh, capacity. Another thing we do, we're all about uh, information sharing here at, at MITRE Corporation. 
So, um, so it's very important for us in every project that we work to be able to create the kind of uh, documentation and knowledge assets that can then be searched and, and exposed to the other parts of the organization so we can further our research and, and have more effective partnerships across MITRE and then also too, as I mentioned before, with our, with our part, new partners that are coming online. So when being able to uh, help our engineers uh, be able to articulate um, and then use MCHAT to uh, really set that narrative in a very effective and, and shareable way, that's been very, very powerful for our workforce. All right, wonderful. So my last question for you really is some of the major lessons you've learned in the process of driving enterprise-wide AI adoption. Any advice to other organizations in GovCon also looking to adopt generative AI technologies and, and others to fuel innovation? Sure, you know, if you don't, um, if you don't step into the unknown, uh, you know, you're really not gonna be able to push innovation and, and our nation needs innovation at a scale uh, that we've never experienced before. So I know a lot of organizations have been concerned about the adoption of AI and the utilization of AI before uh, the guardrails of some have said have been put up. Uh, in other words, you know, let's get the policy in place before we can actually deploy or make it accessible to the workforce. Uh, my, my recommendation is to uh, share sooner, access sooner, try sooner. We have to trust our workforce and we can give our workforce guidance about appropriate and acceptable use, uh, just like we would with any other kind of access to technology. So my recommendation is to get it out there, let your people experiment with it, let them share with you uh, the great things that they're accomplishing and then really help accelerate your business. Uh, there's a CEO that I have a lot of respect for that has a, a construct that I like very much. And he asks a question of his executive staff often. He asks, when was the last time you did something for the first time? And I think it's very, very important for us to look at the opportunity to engage AI, generative AI, and the derivatives that are there to really find more effective work patterns and new ways that we can partner and succeed at solving some of the most difficult problems that are facing us. All right, wonderful. Well, Cedric, thanks so much for joining us today and talking through a bit about enterprise-wide AI adoption with MITRE and how other organizations can follow suit. We really appreciate it. Well, thank you so much, Amanda, and wish you and the folks at Washington Exec the best. And thank you again for another opportunity to speak with you.